how's everyone doing today? I hope everyone's doing really good. Um, I just want to start out with saying I love everybody very, very much. And I want to pray um, that the Holy Spirit leads this message and uh, He speaks the truth through me. I, I pray that, uh, I want to pray that um, the Holy Spirit and I can help you let your, the Holy Spirit that's in you, the Jesus that's in you, under, help you understand basically um, this teaching. And I'm trying to bring something that um, I kind of went over it. Uh, I was talking to one of my friends about it, one of my mentors, one of my instructors, somebody that helps me. And um, he kind of like brought some stuff to my attention. And then I just kind of dove in to the Bible. And I've got some things that um, are pretty interesting. You probably want to take a look at. It's actually um, pretty amazing if you will just give me some time to get it all out. Father God, I just want to thank you for this day, Lord. I want to thank you for coming into me, Father God, every single day, speaking the word through me, Father God. I want to thank you for everything that you do. In Jesus' name, I want to thank you for this, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for speaking through me. Speak through me, Jesus, right now. In Jesus' name, please, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray. All right, we're going to start out in Hosea, okay? And it's going to be Hosea chapter 1, verse through 3. I mean, I'm sorry, Hosea chapter 6, verse 1 through 3, okay? And I'm reading out of the Amplified Version. I also have the King James, New King James. I've got a lot of versions, but I'm reading out of the Amplified Version right now. So um, I study all three versions, though. Um, let me just hold on one second. Okay, I study all three versions, so let's read out of the uh, six one right now. Okay, come and let us return in repentance. Okay, come and let us return in repentance to the Lord, for He has torn us, but He will heal us. He has wounded us, but He will bandage us. After two days, He will revive us. On the third day, He will raise us up, that He may live before Him. That we, that, I'm sorry, that we may live before him. So let us know and become personally acquainted with him. Let us press on to know and understand fully the greatness of the Lord to honor, heed, and deeply cherish him. See, the thing is, is like one day is going to come. The Lord's going to come back. And I'm about to point out some things to you. Okay. My Bible says around 30 AD, 33 AD. Uh, we're not sure exactly when Jesus was born. Uh, 3 BC, 4 BC, you know, we don't, we don't really know exactly the day, but it, you know, give or take, you know, three or four years to 30 years, you know, when he was 30, 33, 80, you know, give or take three to five years is probably pretty accurate with the studies and everything people have done, um, to bring the truth out of this Bible. So, you know, let's just think about that for a second. Think about, okay, Jesus was resurrected around 30 AD, 33 AD, okay? Let's just think about that for just one second, okay? And then I want to go to, um, actually, you know, let's just talk about the verses 6, 1 through 3 real quick. Okay, seven predictions. He will head us. He will bind us up. Bind us up basically means like the rapture. He will pull us up. He will pull us up. He's going to come. And the Bible speaks a lot about this a lot, okay? There's a lot in the Bible that, that it talks about this. So I could bring it to you in a different area, if you want, on another day, if you want me to, just write me an email, and I can point it out to you in different ways. I've actually found a lot of ways that this adds up. So, he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. He will live in his sight. We will live in his sight. Then shall, number six, then, we, then shall we know if we pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Number seven, he will come to us as rain like the latter and for and the former rain to earth okay he's gonna come down like rain that's basically what it's saying here comes jesus the messiah he's coming just pay attention and y'all uh, will really get it okay i'm gonna turn to um romans now i'm gonna be in romans 11 25 through 29 let me just read this to you now okay pay attention here I do not want you, believers, to be unaware of this mystery. Okay, this is God's previous hidden plan, basically. All right? He says right here, 
I do not want you believers to be unaware of this mystery so that you will not be wise in your own opinion. That a partial hardening has temporarily happened to Israel to last until the full number of Gentiles has come in. And so at that time, all Israel, that is all Jews who have personal faith in Jesus as Messiah will be saved. Just as it is written in Scripture, the, de the Deliver Messiah will come from Zion. Zion is basically the place where the Lord's going to come from. You know, it's been known as Jerusalem, um, heaven. It's Zion is basically the Messiah is going to come from Zion, okay? Um, so let's keep reading here. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. That's basically like man, okay, like... We came from somebody, all of us, like, eventually we added up to all the people we have now. We came from somebody. All right. This is my covenant with them. When it when I take away their sins, from the standpoint of the gospel, the Jews at present are enemies of God. At present are enemies of God. Okay. Listen. For your sake which is for your, hold on a second, let me turn the page, for your sake, which is for your benefit, but from the standpoint of God's choice of the Jews as his people, they are still loved by him for the sake of their fathers. The Jewish people are still loved, even though you know they denied him, but he's, he's going to make that right. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. See, the thing is, is like, I was called to God a long time ago to start getting into my ministry and start preaching. And I just decided to fall into the world and do things I shouldn't have done. But then as soon as I came back to God, he's like, you know, I still want you to do what I told you to do. So I'm doing it. Okay. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For he does not withdraw what he has given, nor does he change his mind about those to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. Basically what I said, okay, he calls us, so listen listen up, he calls us, so we need to understand that when we are called, when we go back to him, he's still calling us. So he's still going to tell you to go be a preacher, minister, you know, what you got to do. We are all called to bring glory to Jesus, to God. Okay, now let me just turn to, uh, hold on one second. Okay, now I'm in Ephesians. Listen up, y'all. Listen up. Okay, this is going to be Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. Okay, we're going to read this together. And you, he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sins. Okay, think about this. When you become a Christian and you start living and you repent and you walk away from, you know, what you're supposed to do and, you, and then you start realizing things. So listen. Dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sins. In which you one wa once walked, you were following the ways of this world, influenced by this present age. In accordance with the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit who is now at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving who fight against the pur pur purpose of God. Among these unbelievers, we all once live in the passions of our flesh. And don't get me wrong, I did it. I did it. But now that I know the truth, you know, nothing tastes better than God. I don't want no flesh. Nothing. Flesh is no good anymore. It's just not. It's not good anymore. It's just not good anymore. Let me stop this and restart going here. And action again. And we're back. Okay. And then I, let me just start over reading this little, this verse right here. We're in Ephesians chapter two, verse three, right now. Among these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, which I just said, you know, we all once did that. I even did this and I did it. And I was probably the, one of the worst to do this, but you know, I'm following what I need to follow now. So I hope that some of y'all can understand what you need to follow as well. And I hope this message really brings some light to y'all. So y'all understand that, Hey, this is pretty serious. Our behavior governed by the sinful self, indulging the desires of human nature without the Holy Spirit and the impulses of the sinful mind. We were by nature children under the sentence of 
God's wrath just like the rest of mankind. But God being so very rich in mercy because of his great and wonderful love with which he loved us, even when we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins, he made us spiritually alive together with Christ. That was his plan. He sent Christ to bring us back to him. For by his grace, his undeserved favor and mercy, which we don't deserve this, but he's given it to us because he loves us so much. You have been saved from God's judgment. That's in Romans 6, 1 through 10, if you want a, uh, another reference for that. And he raised us up together with him when we believed and seated us with him in the heavenly places because he, because we are in Christ Jesus. We are in Christ Jesus. And he did this so that in the ages to come he might clearly show the immeasurably and unsurpassed riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus by providing for our redemption for it is grace God's remarkable remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ that you have been saved actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith we get a, we get we are given eternal life through faith, through Jesus Christ. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. That is what it's about, people. you got to have faith in Jesus Christ. He sent Jesus Christ so that way we could have faith. And this salvation is not of yourself, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved, gracious gift of God. we got to remember this is a gift of God, not as a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. When you get to heaven, don't say I did a good job because <laughs> you didn't. I didn't. God did a good job figuring out a way to bring us all. <clears throat> for we are his works, workmanship, his own master, master work, a work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. Okay, and then I just want to like point out one thing in Romans 1.13. It says, Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often plan to come to you. And then my little side note says, until now. Okay. And then Matthew 24, 39, it says, And did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of Son of Man be. Okay. Moses stood out there and told everybody, Hey, you know, God's coming. God's coming. You know, or, or I'm sorry, not Moses, Noah. I'm sorry, Noah. I'm sorry. Noah stood out there and said, hey, you know, God, the, the, the flood's coming. You know, be prepared. Nobody listened to Noah. He, he was building the ark, and nobody was like, whatever, Noah, you're, you're not, you're, that's not accurate. Noah, you're wrong, Noah. You're so wrong. Okay, then the flood comes. Then everybody's gone except for Noah and his family and the people that were on Noah's ark. Okay, let's think about that. Now, I'm bringing this to you, and I'm going to bring you one more thing in 2 Peter, and then we're going to go back to Hosea. So I really hope you're paying attention. I'm doing this kind of fast, but you can watch this as many times as you want and take out your Bibles, and it will, it will really it will really help you understand some things, because the Word is on our hearts. And when we hear the Word, it comes out, and we understand it, because it's truth, it's power, it's Jesus, it's Lord, it's God. The Word is, is, the, is us. It's The Word is us. Goodness. So amazing. Okay, we're going to be in 2 Peter chapter 3, 5 through 13. Okay, how much time do I got? Okay, here we go. For they willingly forget the fact that the heavens existed long ago by the word of God, and now the earth was formed out of water and by water through which the world at the time was destroyed by being flooded with water. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly people. Nevertheless, listen to this, nevertheless, do not let this one fact escape you. Do not let this one fact escape you. 
Okay? Escape your notice. Be loved that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like one day. Okay, it also says that in Psalm 94. There's, there's a lot of ways we can put this together, and I'm just putting it together this way. This is how I'm putting it together. The Lord does not delay as though he were unable to act and is not slow about his promise as some count slow, slowness, but is extraordinarily patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. It says the Lord does not delay. Okay, the Lord doesn't delay. Don't be ignorant, brethren. Don't be ignorant, beloved. Then in Hosea, let's go back to Hosea real quick, and then we're going to finish right here. Just bear with me two seconds. Turn to it. All right, here we go. And put, trust me, I've broken down all the uh, context of these messages, too. This is exactly what I'm telling you. Okay. Come and let us return. Okay, 6, 1, th 1 and 2. Okay. Come and let us return in repentance to the Lord. For he has torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. Okay. Two days. On the third day, he will uh, rise us up. Now, right here it says in Second Peter... 7 and 8, it says, 7, 8, 9, it says, But his word, the present heavens and earth, are being reserved for fire being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly people. Nevertheless, do not let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord does not delay. The Lord does not delay, okay? One day is like a thousand years. If you go back to what I just read, it says, The Lord will raise us up on that third day, and it says, very clearly, it says, the Lord does not delay, okay? The Lord does not delay. So we don't know, but let's say, let's think for a second. It says one day is like a thousand years, all right? Well, we have two days, so that's 2,000 years. Okay, the Lord doesn't delay, okay? 2,000 years, my Bible says 30 AD, maybe 33, you know, we don't know the exact time. But let's just think about that. Doesn't it seem like 2,000 years from 30 A.D., which we are in 2017 A.D. right now, ish? Just think about that. Think about that. Well, think about what that says. Okay, right there. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, being kept for the day of the judgment and destruction of the ungodly people. Nevertheless, do not let this one fact escape you. Your notice, be loved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord does not delay. The Lord does not delay. People, we need to understand the Lord does not delay. Okay? There's a lot of things in the history that, that people didn't listen to. There's a lot of things in history that people didn't listen to. And I'm going to go over them, and then we're going to finish. But i got to switch this out one more time. Hold on. Okay. Well, we're back. So we're back on the Lord does not delay, and it says in Hosea, he will revive us on that third day. And then it says in Peter, that a thousand years is like a day, a day is like a thousand years. And it says, don't be ignorant, okay? These are some things that, that, the, that we have been ignorant of. You know, let's finish reading real quick, uh, 10 through 13, and it's 2 Peter chapter 10, verse, I'm sorry, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 through 13. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. A thief, and then the heavens will vanish with a mighty and the thunder ro thunderous roar, and the material elements will be destroyed with the intense heat, and earth that works that are on it will be burned up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in the way, in that, in this way, what kind of people ought you to be in the meantime? In holy behavior that is in pattern of the daily life that see that sets you apart as believer, as a believer. And in godliness, displaying profound reverence toward our aware, aware, awesome God, excuse me, toward our awesome God, while you earnestly look for and await the coming of the day of God. For on this day, the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the material elements will melt with intense heat. But in accordance with his promise, he expectantly awaits new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Okay, what we need to realize is the time is very very near, 
okay, of Jesus' coming. I know that they said that, you know, a long time ago, but there's a lot of false prophets, a lot of people that, you know, didn't add this up the right way, you know, and people just took it and ran with it. We need to actually go back to the scripture because that's the only way we can get the information that we actually need it. That's how God speaks to us is the Holy Scripture. So if we listen to what the Scripture says, then we know that God is coming back very near, very soon. We need to be those people that's searching out. I mean, there's miracles happen on Times Square. People are getting healed by Jesus Christ on Times Square. People are getting healed all over the world by Jesus Christ. Through It takes one Christian... I mean, it's, the Bible says a prophet will not be accepted in his hometown, which basically means that you, you will not be accepted preaching or healing people. But if you leave your hometown, God will do this. Jesus will do this. This is a covenant that said, if you abide in him, if you live righteously in him, if you are not sinning and you are following his law, he will abide. He will heal people if you pray for them. I just want y'all to understand this, okay? This is so literal. And like I brought it up in scripture, I show, I broke it down very much, and then we're gonna read, we're gonna we're gonna read. I've got what ten points here, no nine points. Okay, and this is verse, this is Second Peter chapter three, five through ten to thirteen ish, and these are my points that I've written down from one of my other notebooks, one of my other Bibles too that I've got the notes out of, the New King James version. I also get notes out of. That by the word of God, the heavens were created of old, that the earth was established in and out of water, that the world that then existed by the flood before Adam, that the heavens and the earth, which are now restored from chaos 6,000 years ago, that the heavens and earth entered their second sinful career, that with God a thousand years is like a day, a day is like a thousand years, that the day of the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but is long-suffering to all men, wishing that all would come to repentance. The thing is, is God wants all of us to come to repentance, that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. There will be no more rebellious in the... We'll put it down. The thing is, is there will be a time where everybody will bow their knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and I, I don't want to come off as... You know, we love, I love you, Jesus loves you, we all love you. We want you to come to repentance, we want you to live righteously. We don't want you to be one of those people that are left behind. We don't want you to be one of those people that are, are, are living not how they need to live. You know, okay, you, you got a little bit of time, but you need to start working on yourself. You don't have a lot of time, you've got a little bit of time. Okay, you need to start working on yourself and working on things you need to work on. And repentance, repentance is where you turn around, look the other way, and start doing something different for God. Righteously, godliness, that's what it's about. Okay, we're, so, we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, but the thing is we're going to take it, we're going to be in account for everything that we've done. You know, I don't know, I don't know what our, our punishment is, is going to be from God. I don't know, I'm not perfect, I'm not God, but what I can tell you is, I'd much rather repent and run to him than be the one that has to take punishment from him. I don't want to be that dude. I hope you don't want to be that woman, man of God that has to take the punishment. I pray for that. I pray for people that I see that aren't living right. I pray that God will open their eyes in some way. I pray that because some of them are my family. And I really pray this. In Jesus' name, that they open their eyes. You know, I broke it down from the scripture, and I'm not speaking with arrogance here, but the, the thing is, is the prophecies have been fulfilled. If you want to sit down with me, and we can go over things, I'll show you where the prophecies have been fulfilled, even nowadays. There's our, there are prophecies being fulfilled in the last 20, 30 years, you know, 100 years recently that have been fulfilled in the Bible. I don't want to speak with arrogance. I want to speak with love and hope and pray that you open up your eyes and um, I hope that somebody receives this in the way they need to receive it. Because we don't have a lot of time. We need to be running to the prize. And the prize is Jesus Christ. Alright, I'm going to end there. And then I'm going um, to I'm gonna pray out real quick and then we're going to get off here. Father God, God the Father, Father in heaven, I want to thank you for everything that you do for me, Lord. I want to thank you for everything that you do for me, Lord. Father God, continue to work in me, Lord Jesus. Continue to... to, to, to let me build my ministry, Father God, in your son's name, Jesus, Father God. Please let me continue it, Lord. I love spending every day in this, and I wish I could spend more time in study, Father God. But I pray, Father God, that you...
I know, actually, I know, Father God, I know there's a way, and you will make it for whatever I need to do, Father God. And I'm going to pray for that in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for these people, Father God, that they receive this message. And it opens up their eyes and their minds and their hearts to you, Father God, so that way they can know the truth in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray this in Jesus' name. Thank you all so much.